fall rolls around, there is nothing than a wonderful stew or soup or something that's just warming for that, for that time of the, of the year. And there is nothing better than the French classic Blanca de Veau. Hey guys, if this is your first time tuning in, let us know you're out there by giving us a thumbs up below and then hit that subscribe button over here in the left corner to make sure you never miss a video. Now let's start cooking. Okay, today we are talking about Blanquette de Veau. And Blanquette de Veau is basically a veal stew that's been slowly and tenderly cooked for actually a couple of hours. And then it is covered in a beautiful white cream sauce and it's got some accompanying vegetables. So really it's just, it's a very simple concept, but this, this traditional preparation involves a few steps. So first we've got veal, and I've got about a kilo here, or two pounds of veal meat, and I've got a, a mixture of shoulder and cheek, and it's been uh, cut from the butcher, but I'm probably gonna trim it just a little bit more. We've got a couple of pieces, a couple of things like that that we'll trim, that kind of thing. That is going to cook very slowly with this, uh, it's, it's basically called an aromatic garnish. And this aromatic garnish is, is basically one onion cut in half with a clove stuck in each. And then we've got a carrot stick, or a carrot stick uh, cut up into large pieces and a celery stick and a couple of cloves of garlic. And the reason these are, are cut so large is that they're actually gonna be removed once the meat is finished cooking. They're gonna be removed from the, from the pot leaving just the meat and then the meat will be removed and that cooking liquid that we used is going to turn into a sauce. So part of the, the other part of this is called a uh, uh, garniture a l'ancienne and that's basically just a traditional garnish of pearl onions and mushrooms and we are just going to do basically glaze both of these. It's called etuve in French, but it's just gonna be uh, gently cooked in a little bit of water and butter and flavored with salt, sugar, and pepper. And then we've got some uh, seasonal vegetables that we'll add. And I've got some potatoes here and I've got some carrots. And I've just turned these, um, this is just a technique called uh, cocotte, potatoes, uh, pomme cocotte and these uh, potatoes are all about the same size so they should cook about the same time. I'm gonna gently steam those and we might actually put them in a little bit of butter as well. And then we're also gonna glaze our carrots. And so we've turned our carrots as well. And that's really just a matter of preference and a matter of consistency in the look, in the final look of the dish. And our sauce today is going to be, we're gonna make a roux using some butter and flour, and then we're gonna add the cooking liquid from the meat to make our velouté, which is, is part of the sauce. Then we'll thicken it with some cream, and then we'll do a little creme fraiche and egg yolk to further thicken it. And we're gonna be using today, I've got a couple of uh, 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 black peppercorns and a couple of white peppercorns. Ideally, you would like to use white peppercorns because this is a white cream dish or a white sauce dish, um, but we've got a, a mixture of both of those. And I've got the lemon there just to flavor the, the mushroom mixture when we, when we cook those. So those are our ingredients, let's get started. So one of the things about veal is that it's, it's a very soft and tender meat and we are going, and it's, it's, it's not very fatty, but I'm just gonna trim a little bit of, you know, every once in a while you'll, you'll see a little bit of silver skin, which is something that is not going to break down. So we're just gonna trim that little bit of silver skin from this and I've, I've already trimmed the rest of it. And that, that will make this meat easier to cook. So, and I'm just gonna cut it right there. And that's got just a little bit. And the way you wanna do that is you wanna just put your knife right under the edge of it. In fact, you can just take it all the way through. You can just kinda of see how that goes right through that silver skin. And then just pull the rest of it off, just like that. All right, so that's it for the trimming of our 
veal. So one of the things that we want to do with this process is that a lot of times when you're braising, and it's similar to braising, but as opposed to you know braising beef for short ribs or something like that, we're not going to sear the meat. We're actually just going to blanch this meat to clear it of its impurities and any excess fat that's there. We're going to blanch it, which means we're going to, go, we're going to actually put it in a pot and cover it with cold water. And we're going to bring that to a boil. And once it boils, it will bring up all of these impurities and, and things that need to be trimmed from the meat. And so we'll take our spoon and we'll trim that. We'll actually remove the meat, we'll rinse it, we'll clean our pan and start over with cold water on top of that. Similar to if you're trying to make a really clean stock, um, that's kind of what you want to do. You want to blanch the bones and uh, bring that to the boil. It'll bring all these impurities up. You skim those impurities, you throw that water out, you rinse off the meat, and then you start over with clean water. So that's what we're gonna do now, is we're just gonna start with cold water. We're gonna bring this to the boil. We'll skim it, and then we will rinse the meat, and we'll put it back into a clean pot. Our meat is coming to the boil we'll go ahead and we'll start on our, on our, our garnish. So let's do first, let's do our, our pearl onions. And we're just gonna put those into a little, a little pan and we're gonna add some water. We're just gonna, we're gonna kind of partially cover those with water. About like that. And we're going to bring them to a boil and we're gonna season them with a little bit of salt and some pepper and a little bit of sugar. So just a little bit of salt. And we're just gonna grind in some pepper. And literally just a touch of sugar is all we need. And these are just, these are just small flavoring elements. And, and again, this, this technique is, is similar to glazing we're gonna add just a little bit of, uh, of butter to that pan. And this will be what glazes our onions. Now, in addition to everything we just did, we're gonna make a cartouche. And a cartouche is a, is a covering of parchment paper. And the way that you do that is we're going to grab our parchment paper and we want a piece of paper about the same size as our pan. So we'll cut our paper, same size as our pan. And what we'll do is we fold our paper in half, just like this. And then we fold it again, just like that. And this point is important. So we wanna make sure that we, we have this point when, once we fold this paper, we are now gonna be folding it over on itself with the point on one edge. Okay, just like that. Kinda of like making paper planes when you're in school. All right, and the reason we want that point is now we're gonna use that point, we're gonna put it right in the center of our pan and then we're going to trim this paper and that is going to give us our cartouche just like that and that is going to give us the circular shape that we want that we'll put in uh, the pan over our vegetables now once this comes to a boil we'll then turn that down we'll you know mix this around a little bit but then we'll turn this down and we'll put the cartouche over it. And what the cartouche does, you, some, you know, sometimes you, you might wonder, well, why not just cover it? Well, you want, the, uh, you want the steam to escape, but you want to keep the moisture in. And a cartouche does that. It, it helps to keep everything moist, but it also helps to, uh, to uh, evaporate the, you know, the excess water. And so we're going to cook this until most of that water is gone and the onions are basically glazed. Okay, 
In the same vein as we're starting our onions, we can actually start our potatoes. So what I've got is just a steamer here. I've got it filled up about a quarter with, with some water. And we are just going to put our potatoes in the top. And we are just gonna turn this water up. And we've, the water is not, it's not boiling yet. So we are just gonna, we're using cold water. We're gonna go ahead and add some salt to this water. It's almost like making, you know, boiling potatoes from scratch, but that salt, of course, is gonna to help to, to flavor the potatoes. So we're gonna turn this up, let it come to a boil, and then it's just going to, we're gonna cover it up, and then it's gonna steam, uh, steam the potatoes. All right, and now you can see where our onions have now come to a boil, and we don't wanna boil them to death, so we're just gonna now turn that heat down and let that continue to, we want it to simmer, a nice strong simmer. And so we will now cut, cover this with our cartouche and we'll let that cook. And anytime we see that this water is starting to boil too much, we'll, we'll turn it down a little bit. All right, and so now we've got our, our meat that's in this pot and it's coming to the boil and once that once that starts boiling it'll bring up all these impurities that we will then um, trip, skim off and then we'll start over with that process in the same way that we're doing our onions we're actually going to do our carrots and we've now uh, put our carrots in a, in a pan and just going to add a little bit of salt over that and same thing a little bit of a little bit of black pepper and again if we had white pepper it might be better to use that since we've got a, a white cream sauce. And we will add a touch of butter. And now if you've got something you wanted to flavor these carrots with, like some tarragon or something like that, you could certainly put that in there as well. And we'll do the same thing. We'll turn this on, bring it to the boil, and we'll cover it with a cartouche and let it cook down until the carrots are glazed. And we'll be just moving around, moving them around from time to time just to make sure the glaze gets all over everything. Okay, our veal water has come to a boil. And as you can see, there's actually not very much um, that we need to, tr to skim from this at all. This is actually a very well trimmed piece of meat. So we don't have that much that we need to to skim from this, but we will go ahead and empty this water and we'll start over with some fresh water. And you so you might ask the reason why I'm skimming this. And the main reason is we want the meat to, to remain clean and not, we don't want to pour the meat out with, with all of the impurities on it. So what we're going to do now is remove the meat we're, and we're putting it in a colander and we're going to rinse the meat in some cold water and then we will clean this pan and we'll start this whole process again with some cold water. Okay and so now the reason we're doing this is because we are making a sauce at the end of this and we want our sauce to be really nice and clear or nice and clean. It's going to be a clean white sauce. So we're going to go ahead and rinse this. We're going to rinse this meat off let that drain and we're going to pour this water out and start again with some fresh clean water and again the reason is is that we are making a, a beautiful white sauce with this and we want it to be very very clean and I don't know if you can see that but if you can see into the pan you've got the residual from the the meat that was in it. So we want to wash that out and we're going to start again with a clean pan. All right, we have rinsed our meat and we have now covered this meat with some fresh clean water and we're now going to add our aromatic garnish, which is our onion, our carrots, celery, and our couple of garlic cloves. And we're going to add a, a bouquet garni. I think I forgot to mention the, the bouquet garni. And the bouquet garni is really just a flavor packet of fresh herbs. In this case, I've got two sprigs of rosemary. I've got four sprigs of thyme, a sprig of parsley, 
and a celery leaf. And that's going to be our flavoring, uh, herb flavoring for this, for this mixture. And now we're going to bring this to the boil again. Actually, let's season it. We're going to season it with our peppercorns as well as some salt. And now we're going to bring this to the boil again. And once it comes to the boil this time, we're going to cover it and simmer it for about two hours. And that will be, that will be how we cook this, cook this meat. And we just want this veal to be very nice and nice and tender. So that's, that's really the hardest part of our process. And now let's look at our carrots. We've got our carrots in here and they have come to a nice, a nice boil. And we did the same thing. We made a cartouche for the carrots. And so we'll cover those up and we'll let those do this. It'll be basically the same process as our onions were. Let's take a look at our onions. And you can see that they're cooking right along and probably half the water has evaporated. So this process takes about 20, 25 minutes, something like that. But boy, will they be delicious. And now what we're looking for with our potatoes, and again, we're just steaming these potatoes. So we just want them to be nice and, and, and soft. We want our knife to go through them without any resistance. And um, because we may just keep them steamed. Now we could also just put them into a little bit of butter and finish them off with some butter at the end. But um, nice and steamed is what we're going for right now. As this meat again comes up to the boil again, we're still going to get a little bit of, of impurities. We're just going to skim that as we go. So we're just going to continue to, to skim this as this comes up. And again, the whole reason for this is that we want a very nice clean sauce. We will be, of course, straining the vegetables out, but all of these small little things won't get strained out in, in, that, in that process. And we're getting all these vegetables cooked now, and they're gonna be actually added in at the very end. But once they're cooked, we'll just set them aside, and then we'll warm them back up at the end. Our potatoes should be nice and, and ready to go now. And yes, look at that. They are tender and the fork goes right through them. And what we're going to do is we will now take the potatoes out and I'm just gonna put them in some cold water and we're gonna let them sit uh, until the end because what the cold water will do is it'll stop them cooking for one thing because uh, we don't want them to be mushy. And then at the end, when we put them back in with the rest of the stew, that of course will, will heat them up. I can tell they're actually a little bit softer than we might want. But uh, those are done and ready to go. Let's just see how they taste. Oh, wow. Very, very tasty. It's amazing what just some salted water will do with some potatoes. So those are ready to go. We're just going to set them aside until we're ready to finish our dish. And now everything else is going as planned. We've got our carrots. I decided to go ahead and add a little bit of tarragon just for some flavoring in there. And so these are, these are going right along and they are getting nice and glazed. You can smell the, the butter and the seasonings in there. And let's taking a look at our onions. You can see literally three quarters of that water is now gone. So those are getting very nice and flavorful. And basically when the onions finish, we, like I said, we'll take those out and we're gonna actually put the mushrooms in the same pot that the onions were in and we'll use some of that same flavoring for the, for the mushrooms. Okay, so we're just continually skimming our, our pot here. We really wanna make this, make sure this is nice and clean and I'm even then this is the reason I'm not covering this pot up just yet because I'm just I'm skimming it quite frequently and um, we also want to use I've got a, just a pastry brush I'm just going to keep the sides cleaned 
so that we don't get anything stuck to the sides that could then inadvertently fall back into our into our cooking liquid. And again, this, this whole process is about having a beautiful, clean white sauce at the end of the cooking process. So again, we're just going to continue to, to heat this up. When it boils, we'll skim it and then we'll cover it and we'll let it cook for uh, well, about an hour and a half. We'll check it and see where we are. So as your, as your carrots cook, you may just want to turn them every 10 minutes or so just to make sure that all sides are getting getting cooked very well okay and again we're looking for these we're, we're we're trying to get these not to where they're just falling apart but nice and soft to where your your knife can go through without much resistance at all and it's almost there and they're going to have this fantastic glaze look at that look at the color of that that's just going to make a beautiful glaze okay so our carrots are to that point let's go ahead and let's take them out and we what we're going to do is cook down this this liquid our glazing liquid and then we'll just pour that on top of our on top of our carrots so they still have all that wonderful flavor okay that's fantastic so we'll continue to cook this down until it's nice and syrupy and we're going to do the same thing with the with the onions in fact the onions are are done as well so we'll continue to cook those and then we'll take them out and we'll we'll cook that glaze down a little bit let's take our onions out and we're going to continue cooking that liquid until it's nice and syrupy And you know, there's, there's, there's really lots of different ways you can do this. Uh, what we're doing is, is glazing and we're cooking these liquids down. And I mentioned that we would, um, we could cook the mushrooms in this, in this glazing liquid. So what we'll do is we'll, 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 we'll cook some of this liquid down and I'll pour some of it over the onions and then the rest of it we'll put in, uh, in, uh, in with the mushrooms. It's come to a boil again, and as you can see now, it's we've been we've been skimming it, and I've kept the side of that pan clean. So now we're actually just going to turn that down, and we're just going to turn it to a simmer, and we're going to cover it up and let it go for probably at least an hour and a half, and then we'll come back and check it. In the meantime, I've already added my mushrooms into the pan where the onions cooked and I'm just going to add just a little bit of butter into that pan and basically we're sauteing these these mushrooms we'll add just a little bit of salt to it not a whole lot because it already had some salt from the from the uh, onions that were in there but we'll just let those cook around and saute and again all of the the this this garniture uh, a la ancienne which is the mushrooms and the onions that will be added into the stew for about the last 15 minutes before we get ready to serve it just to kind of heat through and help flavor the flavor the stew and then we'll add our uh, our uh, seasonal vegetables in on top of that so we're just gonna we're just gonna cook these to kind of glaze them and get get this flavor in them all right our mushrooms are nice and glazed and um, wow that is they smell incredible absolutely all right so the mushrooms are ready and we're just gonna now take those out and we'll set those aside with everything else and all of our garniture our seasonal vegetables everything else is ready to go and we'll just be ready to add them. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of lemon juice over those just to make sure that um, they don't they don't color or anything and so this is all of our our garniture and our vegetables they are 
ready to go. As soon as these cool down a little bit, I'll cover those with some cling film as well. And then the next thing we'll do is make, when our meat is done, then we will make our sauce. It's been about an hour and 20 minutes and our meat is coming along very, very well. It's getting nice and nice and tender. And we don't want it quite falling apart. We just want it nice and tender and it is quite tender. So what we're gonna do now is we'll be making our sauce soon. So we're going to make a roux. In order to make the roux, we've got our butter, which in this case, we've got 30 grams of butter and we're going to melt it. And then once the butter is melted, we'll add in our flour and we'll stir those together and we'll cook it for about a minute. And that will become what is called a roux. And then we will uh, set that aside, let it cool down a little bit. And by that time, our meat should be done we will take the actual meat out of the pot and we will uh, discard the vegetables or we'll set the vegetables aside. We'll strain the sauce from the, from the, the cooking juices and then we will um, add the cooking juices to this roux to give us the beginnings of our sauce. But what we want to make sure is that our roux has cooled down a little bit and we'll bring that cooking liquid to a boil because you want to put uh, a hot liquid into a cold roux, or do you want to put a hot roux or a cold liquid into a hot roux? In, in order to make a, a, an emulsion, you, your, either your roux should be hot and your liquid should be cold, or your roux should be cold and your liquid should be hot. So in this case, what we'll do is, we've, since we've made our roux, we'll set it aside and let it cool. So we're just gonna to toss in our flour all at once. And we just wanna mix it very well. And we're over low heat. And this is, this is our roux. And we just wanna stir it and cook it for about a minute, minute and a half. And what that does is it will just cooks the rawness out of the flour. But this is gonna be the, the base of our wonderful creamy sauce that we're gonna have. So we'll let this finish cooking for about another minute or so, and then we'll set it aside and let it cool. Okay, our roux is cooked and uh, nice and smooth. So now we'll just remove it from the heat and we'll set it aside and let it cool. Hey everybody, it's Walter from Artistic Gourmet Adventures. My wife Kim and I own this unique small group tour company where we host groups of 6 to 12 guests for one week luxury adventures in beautiful locations throughout Europe and the United States. I have the privilege of being the adventure chef, creating and preparing daily gourmet meals for our guests. So in this video series from our cozy home kitchen here in the beautiful Loire Valley of France, we will demonstrate a wide variety of recipes from culinary classics to originals, as well as covering professional kitchen techniques for the home chef. For more information on Artistic Gourmet Adventures, check our website, linked in the description below. Okay, our meat is done. So what we'll do now is we're going to, we're going to take the meat out and just set it aside. We'll keep it warm. We'll put some cling film over it just to keep it warm or somewhat warm. We'll remove our bouquet garni. It's done its job and so we are finished with it. And now we can remove the vegetables. Good, and so now what we'll do is we'll strain this, these juices into another pot so that we can heat that up and begin our sauce. All right, so from our, our cooking liquid, we're just going to strain that into our another pot here. We're hoping to have about 500 milliliters of this cooking liquid to make our sauce. And that looks like about 500 milliliters. So what we'll do now is we'll bring this sauce to the boil 
and then we're going to mix it in with our with our cooled roux. We've got our cooking liquid strained and we've got our somewhat cooled roux. And so what we're gonna do now is just add our liquid into our roux and we're just gonna stir it in quite vigorously. And then we'll turn our heat on. And this should start thickening up. As you can see, it, it's already doing its, its job of thickening. And you can see how nice and smooth it is. Oh, look at that. Beginning of a beautiful sauce. And let's now add our, our heavy cream to this. We'll just whisk that in. Now at this point, since we have now added our cream, we no longer want to bring this to the boil because we don't want it to, to start to separate. But we want to do, we want that sauce to be nice and to, to remain nice and thick. So we'll keep that heat on fairly low. And I'm going to go ahead and season this now because it has not been seasoned yet. So we'll add a little bit of salt. And I'm going to add a little bit of uh, white peppercorns or just just ground white pepper to this sauce and we'll give it a taste and see how we're doing Mm. It is an absolutely wonderful flavor. Really, really nice. So now, you know, we could leave this sauce just like it is, but it is really supposed to be a, a quite thick sauce. So we're actually going to thicken this sauce with what is called a liaison. So to make the li liaison, we are going to mix we're going to whisk um, our egg yolks into our creme fraiche. So we've got two egg yolks. In this case today, we don't need the we don't need the whites. So I'm just going to get a small whisk for our creme fraiche. Mixture. And we will then, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of our, of our sauce into this mixture. Now, I probably sh would have done well to get a little bit larger bowl for this, but we'll be fine. I'm just going to add a little bit of our already prepared sauce to this, just to kind of temper it, because we don't wanna, we don't wanna end up with cooked egg. So we'll add a little bit more to this and just just temper it. And again, this is this is called a liaison, and it's basically a something that will help to thicken our already fairly thick sauce. And now we just want to add that to our sauce. Just uh, whisking the entire time and 
until that's nice and smooth. And now we'll give our sauce one more, one more taste and make sure that we've got the balance that we like. It is absolutely beautiful. It is very, um, it's silky. It's buttery. You can taste the butter in there from the roux. And this, this sauce is done. It's ready to go. So I'm going to take that off the heat because again, we don't want that to start boiling. So that's done. What we'll do now is we're going to add our meat back into our, our pot. And we will put our sauce in there. And we've got our garniture. So we've got our onions, our pearl onions, as well as our mushrooms. So now we're just going to heat everything back up and get everything stirred together. And then at the very last minute, we will add in our seasonal vegetables as part of our finished dish. So we'll just bring this up to temperature with some with, with a low low heat and then we'll finish it with our vegetables. All right we have got our sauce incorporated back with our meat and our vegetables. We have kept our uh, seasonal vegetables warm in the oven and I actually stirred a couple of those into the pot but then we'll we've reserved a few of them to just put on top for our for our presentation. So let's go ahead and we will serve it up. Since it's a blanket de veau, it is basically a, a veal stew and a blanket of cream sauce. And look at that. Oh, you just, the smell is just, is to die for. Our vegetable garnish. And one last one. Okay, let's get it plated and we'll give it a taste. We are ready to serve up this veal uh, this Blanquette de Veau, and we are pairing this today with some, with just some, some rice. I've got a, a wild basmati rice, and you know, you can, you can, you can have this with, you know, rice, you can have it with noodles, you know, whatever you'd like would be a really great combination. Um, and I think that's a pretty nice little serving, and a little bit of extra cream. There we go. We are having this today with a, uh, a dry white wine from the Loire Valley. And this is a Chenin Blanc. And uh, it's not extremely dry, but it's seen, uh, obviously seen some oak from the color of it, but it's uh, kind of a nice woody white uh, wine and a nice French baguette. So there we have it, Blanquette de Veau. Let's give this a try. Oh, look at that. Look at the meat. Oh, it's so tender. Mmm. Mmm. It is just melting your mouth delicious. And that sauce, wow. These glazed carrots. Mm. along with the onions and the mushrooms, the rice. Again, this would be wonderful over, you know, any kind of noodles that you wanted, a rice. Lots of different ways that you could, that you could uh, pair this. But 
If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, give us a thumbs up below and hit that subscribe button, it's free. And ring the bell if you want to be notified as soon as we release a new video. Also, let us know in the comments if you have any special recipe requests. We really appreciate you tuning in. See you next time.